UC Irvine, as I think probably everybody in the room knows, was here without me uh, in 07, I think that was. So uh, only, only a couple of our coaches were on that team. None of our players, of course, were here at that time. Um, we've had an interesting road to get here. Uh, it's been exciting. Um, we, we feel like we are, uh, we feel like we're a team that, uh, like I suppose most coaches feel, if, if, we, if we pitch it pretty good and if we catch it, well, then we've got a chance. Uh, I will tell you this, that uh, Omaha, the College World Series, is a dramatically different place uh, from when, when the last time I was here. And this, uh, this event, has, which was great then, I can promise you, has blown up by 500. Um, it's a spectacular opportunity, and uh, I'm really, really glad our players get to experience this. This is, this is sensational. Well, I, don't, I really don't think that we're unique with any uh, defensive philosophy. Um, I mean, we, I think, again, like everybody, we're, we're, it, it's certainly a goal to uh, limit extra opportunities for our opponent. I mean, they get three outs. It's not just about outs. It's about extra bases. It's about box and wild pitches and... It's not always just errors, it's, it's uh, extra chances that people get. And um, when we've been successful, why we've been able to accomplish that, that doesn't always happen. Um, our outfield play, um, I think, is solid. Our center fielder can go get the ball in center field. And, and uh, certainly, and I, and I do think that the two guys that play left field and right field are are skilled and capable. They're not guys that can really fly, but they run decent. And uh, in this park, um, it's pretty evident that uh, you, do need to be able, you do need to be able to go get it. Um, our junior shortstop, Chris Rabago, has been a, a real good player for us for two years. Uh, and he typically is very, 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 very consistent. Um, and he provides leadership around the diamond for us defensively. Um, the second baseman is solid. That's Grant Palmer. We play a couple other guys there depending on substitutions and that kind of thing. And um, our catcher, a fourth-year junior, Jerry McClanahan, um, is certainly the guy that kind of runs that pitching staff. And... Um, I mean, he's done, a, he's done very well for us. He's been one of the key players for us. So we feel reasonably good about our defense, and it, it, certainly we all realize how critical it is, so it better be good. Um, one of my uh, not-so-fond memories was in 1995, uh, the college team that I was with lost to Cal State Fullerton uh, when Augie was the head coach there. <coughs> Excuse me. And I distinctly remember that Mark Kotze was on that team. And I also remember that as outstanding a player as he was and outstanding as a hitter as he was, he hit second in the lineup and sacrificed. And he sacrificed in the first inning. And what I came to realize about that was that it was an immediate, valuable contribution. Uh, any player that executes a skill that moves a runner uh, comes to realize and feels actually, I think, a sense of accomplishment um, with that immediate execution of a skill. It really, uh, for me, was a valuable lesson in unselfishness. And uh, it's something that I've always kept in mind because um, if Mark Kotze, who was at the time the best, the best player in college baseball, um, could accept those roles. Hey, listen, he got his at bats, he got his swings, he hit his home runs. Um, but of course, and he was, I think, in my view, Augie, I, uh, of course, he was Augie's player, but I've become familiar with Mark Kotze over time. And so I know he's an exceptional person. And so it doesn't surprise me that he would be that unselfish. But I've often felt that if a guy like that, uh, would be accepting of those kinds of team values 
Well, it was a good lesson for all of us. And so our players uh, are really made to understand that, that, that this is what, what we have to do. It has to be on anybody to, if a sacrifice is needed, and certainly move a runner, uh, give us a productive out, uh, give, give up yourself uh, uh, for, the, for the sake of the team. I, th I think it was a great lesson for us, and it's something that we've had in mind over all these years. Well, there's no question about the fact that um, in the case of our players, they are, um, they are dazzled by this ballpark and they're loving it and they're excited by it. Uh, I, I think we'd all be stunned if that was not the case, um, as, as both Augie and Tim have said. Um, and I'm good with that. I really am. I, I mean, I, it would be, <laughs> it'd be difficult to believe if they weren't really drinking it all in, they are. They, they are loving it, and um, naturally, I'm concerned that uh, once we see the burnt orange on, on the other side of the field, and we see the numbers of people in the stands, I am concerned about uh, can they harness their emotions. There's, there's just no question about it. Um, I'm going to trust that. Uh, that they really do know who they are and that once the game starts that they will they'll be able to settle down and and deal with it and play you know play to the level that they're capable of playing well I, I, I certainly don't think it was a matter of being so loose and relaxed um, on, on the subject of the way our season ended in our conference um, what I've what I've tried to explain because this question has come up a lot and um, the conference that we we're in, uh, and, and Augie has a history in this conference, and so I, I think he would be familiar with, his, with all of these people. Um, that conference is an underrated conference, and, and in my experience, um, the conference this year was maybe the best that it's ever been from top to bottom. There were no gimmies in the conference. Uh, we knew going in, however, that the toughest part of the conference was going to be at the back end because we would play Fullerton, well, we would play Cal Poly, Fullerton, and Long Beach State all three of whom are really good, and uh, all three are capable of having been here and, and done well here. Um, we lost eight in a row to those three teams, and in five of those eight games, why it was, we had the lead in the eighth and or the ninth. The point of that is, is that there's still losses, but um, they were, they were dogfights of games. We competed very, very well. With, with people who were, who were going good and were good. And so I kind of feel like had we played those three teams at the very beginning, I'd have a hard time saying the result wouldn't have been the same at the beginning. And if we had the same result with the people we played at the beginning at the end, well then, shoot, we would have been a strong finisher. Everybody would have said, that's a great club the way they're coming on. Um, our players knew that, um, that they could compete and um, while it was while it was well known that it was uh, anything but a but a done deal that we would get in, I really felt that that conference warranted five teams being in and certainly four. So, uh, however, I knew that what might be right and what might be true might be two different things. That it was certainly right that we would get in. I felt that we deserved to be in. I don't think we have to apologize for being in. But on the other hand, there was no denying the truth of the way that last three weeks went. So we could not by any means take for granted that we would get in. Once we got in, um, it wasn't, uh, we didn't feel like we were just playing with house money and that uh, let's just let it all hang out and see how it goes. I think everybody was um, genuinely convinced that uh, we'd be able to compete well. And if we followed the formula that everybody has, which is pitch and catch it and uh, try to scratch together some ways to get a few runs, we might have a chance to, we might have a chance to really succeed, and that's what happened. Well, um, the Reader's Digest version, uh, version is that um, while he was a successful pitcher at the high school level and then went to community college because he was, he was not recruited, uh, and not by us either, by the way, uh, he was always thought to be too little and didn't look like they look and really didn't have the stuff of a, of a, of a, of a 
Division I winning college pitcher. He was a right-handed 5'11", 5'10", high school probably closer to 5'9", kid, 150 pounds. So while he could pitch, um, he was too little. So he went to, as at least he was perceived to be too little, he went to community college in Los Angeles at Rio Hondo Community College where he just got gooder. He was better. Uh, he won and he kept winning. His, his, his junior college team had a real successful year, his second year, and he, of all the wins that you talk about, well, 21 of those were in community college. Still, he was not recruited. He was 5'11", he was 87 miles an hour, uh, threw strikes, won. But the truth of the matter is he just got missed, and, and, and we, got, we missed too. Uh, actually, one of Augie's former players, Andy Nieto, who coached with me at uh, the former school where I was, had played against him in high school and recommended him, really pushed him. And, uh, but it's one of those deals, your scholarship money's gone and there's nothing you can do. And so we floated along, so I had some contact, but there's nothing we can do. But fortunately for us, he was available late and very late. I mean, I'm talking at the very end of his second year. That's how we fortuitously came to have him. Came to us at still 5'11". He's 5'11 today. He'll lie and tell you he's 6'1", but he's 5'11". Um, but the 165... Um, has turned into 192 or 95. And so this increased strength has uh, brought with it increased velocity and increased everything, increased bite on his breaking ball. Um, he's always been a, 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 a very, very competitive guy, a uh, very bright guy, and um, intensely um, competitive, I think I should say. So he's been a great story. He really is. And I think what, what you described and what, you, what, what your conclusion was when you met him today is really right on. You know, what, what you saw is what he is. He's a, he's a special kid. And what's so for us, what's uh, among the really gratifying things is that, you know, he was always too little. He, was, he didn't match up. It didn't look like they looked. And so he's always been undrafted. So it was believable that it would be what we call a senior draft this year, one of those money-saving 10th round kind of guys that would get $2,000 and go out and play in Staten Island and maybe get released. And but the fact is he pitched himself above that, and consequently um, here he is today as a second-round pick, and uh, even though he's a senior, he's going to get himself a nice little paycheck, and that's good to see.